much it is. Just <laughs> um, first, I want to say thank you on behalf of myself and the University of Arkansas for meeting with us. Um, it's an honor. Toma de la andal morangi nyone cheralo. Ani tholak nyone. Ani tashtele yes. Ani tuje na yes. Tashtele to everyone. First, I want to ask what your name is and how old are you. Tangbo de la min karina. Ani loka zoinas. My name is Pema Chuzuk and I'm 60 years old. Uh, where were you born? Kesa kawainas. Kesa kuli. In Tibet. Um, what region of Tibet? I don't know whether you know, but it's called uh, a place called Baba in Kham. What was your childhood like in Tibet? I never had the experience of uh, education. When I was around uh, uh, 12 to, uh, to 13 years old, uh, many people were telling me that I should go to school. And uh, one time I in fact listed my name to attend school. And I went to the school, but later on when I uh, cam came back to my home, my mother was telling me that if you go to school, who is going to take care of the goats and the sheep? And so because of that uh, reason, I never went to school. So what did your parents do? Were they farmers? They were farmers. Yeah, farmers. Uh, do you have any siblings? We were six actually, but uh, three of them already died when I was very young. So we were three, we are three now. What year did you leave Tibet? Nineteen eighty-two when I came from Tibet. How was Tibet different before the Chinese took over and after? And the Puyoralo, Puyama Gemimale Gingi, Puda, Gemiletsani Puyi Parala, Kewa Ketungu de Vesu. I don't remember uh, uh, much about the uh, period before Chinese came. So long as I can remember, Chinese were already there. Uh, our parents and uh, the elders were telling about how the Chinese came in. They were saying that the Chinese were just coming in like rivers, uh, unending, continuously coming. But I never saw them coming. They were already there. Why, why didn't you leave, or why didn't your family leave when, in 1959, when the Dalai Lama left? Um, uh, we, we were uh, in a very remote place in Kham and uh, Lhasa is quite already near to uh, uh, India and moreover I didn't know anything about this all of these things because our village is situated in a so remote place that I never heard that even His Holiness has ever fled. I've never heard it. 
My, my father actually traveled to Lhasa from Kham and he also fled to India. But me and my mother never knew what was happening. We continued to stay there. So how did you hear um, about it? Like when in 1984, when you left, um, why did you leave? Actually, what actually happened was my father came back in 1982 to see us, me and my, I mean, our siblings and uh, mother. And then I was, me and my other two sisters were telling our father that we want to go to India, we want to go to India. And then we applied for the pass to go to India. Uh, and their travel document to Tibet was also limited that um, time. And uh, the, day, um, the day of the expiry of the stay in Tibet was, uh, came much before we got our passes. So they went ahead of us and uh, we followed them in a way that uh, when they were in Lhasa we got the pass and we started coming towards uh, uh, Lhasa from our place and when we reached Lhasa um, these people have already reached India and so we came to India. So who, who was with you in your group that you journeyed with? <laughs> We were only three girls. Mm. I have uh, 90 uh, Chinese yuan in my pocket and uh, two other sisters. That's it. Um, how, how did you get there? Did you travel by foot or um, horse? <laughs> ลาซานเนี่ยมาลาซานเนี่ยเจ้าเราเนี่ยพอตัวอ๋องุชิปัตติเดกเจ้าเนี่ยพอตัวคริสเตียนเดดปนจิติอาจารย์เนี่ย
it uh, actually from my village to start that that is actually the time which took uh, it took almost 15 to 20 days just looking for a trucks leaving to Lhasa and it is a Chinese system that they only uh, um, drive in the morning and then they stop and then they don't drive half of the day and the night. So in total, uh, once we started, it took us only a week to reach the border. What was the hardest part about the journey? Langa nang lolo tsu yu ta damba du yong raalo. Kanyi che shu du wichi karish chung su esu mo the difficult part was uh, the hunger um, because we don't have anything to eat and when the Chinese trucks they stop, they stop for eating also. Mm. Oh. Oh. And every time the truck stops and they start eating, we always have to beg for food. And many a times they don't give. But usually if uh, there is a superior involved with it, the superior, the army superior always tell the lower officials that give them some food. But if there are no superiors, Chinese superiors, then we never get food. Uh, was it scary traveling with just three girls? Pumusumransum chukuji yong edigala shenam in the essence. Shenam do the old baroti in the mundu. I don't feel scared. Yeah. Um, once you arrived in India, where did you go then? Gagala leo got a tambu call to him, Miss Rajpula. So <coughs> I reached here, <coughs> just here in a place called Rajpur, just maybe two, three kilometers from here. My father was actually, uh, he has been living single and he came to Tibet actually to pick us up, me, my sisters and my mother. And, but he has nothing here. And uh, when we reached here, my father passed away uh, after a year and he has nothing. Then I was thinking very strongly that I should go back to Tibet because there's nothing here and nothing left here. But then they were, my sisters and other friends were telling that when you go back to Tibet, what are you going to do? Uh, so it is better that you marry here and get, um, try to settle down here. But um, I always feel that I should go back to Tibet. And my, um, when my um, father passed away, he was only 61. <coughs> Uh, 
Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, my mm, husband also just passed away very recently, and he was only 63 also. Um, so what did you do once you were here and your father passed away? I was uh, working as a weaver. Uh, um, apron, apron, I weaved that and I also weave carpets. Um, when did you meet your husband? The other. I go to two sons. I go to two Oh. Ah. And it is um, maybe same as what my daughter's age is now. She is 26, so maybe 26 years before I must have met him. Yeah, yeah. How, uh, how, how old she is, is the time I met him. So she is 26 now, so probably I met him 26 years ago. How many children do you have? I have two, a son and a daughter. What did your husband do? He, he, he's a tailor master. Um, since he has passed recently, what have you been doing? Oh. <clears throat> I mean, for 49 days as a part of a Tibetan custom, where I engaged in prayers. Um, and after the 49 years, I continue going back to my weaving thing. So I'm still weaving apron, Tibetan aprons. <laughs> What are your hope or what are your concerns about the people who are living in Tibet today? Tanda phenang lola me te de de ora lo pepa. Won din zu gang la chorwa khan de si na kon zu la phenang lo yu tin zu la. Dene yan ju ma zu pei ba tan ba de na de san ta kon zu lo ba lo ba tan na kha ri lo ju ta ngat zu ji pu yin sa ya thong ya de pu de ji pu yin lo du. Mm. <laughs> 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 I went to Tibet in 2004 and I met, uh, I went to my village and met people there and uh, they were of course telling me that they have uh, abundance to eat and their livelihood are very good, they were telling me, but uh, when I looked from my point of view, I don't see them as a happy people. I can see that they, they something standing on top of them giving them orders and they were just telling what they have to tell. So although they were telling me that they are happy and they have uh, uh, so much things to eat, uh, from my point of view, they are not happy at all. Can you tell me more about that journey back to Tibet? And the Pearl part, when I was in Sumba, when they go look at the test sheet, that's a Pearl part lawyer. Pearl part, the 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 little passage, the little passage, the little passage here, Ramasu. And then you should put your coat. ไปตัวเดียวเดียวเปิดใช่คือดองเงินตัวคือปัญญาเงียใจสนุกคือเปิดดองตัวเดียวเปิดคือเบลเบลตัวเดียวแต่ไม่ตัวไปเงียใจย
My mother was 83 and uh, I've, my only hope was that uh, I, I will see her before she um, passed away. So I tried very much, very hard to get a Chinese uh, um, uh, permission to go to Tibet. And here in India we have to apply in the Chinese embassy to go to Tibet. And I've given my name so many times in Delhi. Chinese embassy in Delhi and I waited and waited hoping to see my mother at least once before she passes away and then I waited for long and I I didn't get any permission to go to Tibet then I know a person who is from the western region of Tibet and who have some connections at the border and she told me that there is no point in trying at Delhi Chinese Embassy, better you apply at uh, um, Chinese Embassy in Nepal. So she has actually given my name uh, for permission in Nepal Chinese Embassy and from there I got it. And I was so much eager to see my mother but when I reached there, uh, um, she has passed away 25 days before that. So it was a very sad thing for me. So um, when you were in India and your father passed away, did your mother go back to Tibet? When did she go back? Um, once, because I believe they all made the journey to India? Uh, no, no, her mother stayed, continued. Oh, her mother never stayed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, her mother's mother stayed continuously in Tibet. She never came to t uh, India. Okay. Um, are there any other stories from your life that you haven't shared that you would like to share? Tanda susu ki mizik luku yorala, luku dende ta ngazo nyam do ata koran sula ma lamni thoe dende khe duwe salo luku dende. Ngagi mizik luku dende koran sula ni thoe dende ngal usri. Ngal lo pashi ti ngal lo lo ti ya mera di bolo pashi ti. The, the feelings that I really want to share with you is that I always hope for education for myself. And uh, one of the greatest regret that I have is that I never had any education. So I always hope that I will get some education. And now, now that I don't have education, I really look forward to, to educate my children. And I r really work hard to give them education. And, and they are educated now. But uh, uh, since they have to continue their studies, it is not easy. Uh, in, in the financial part, it is quite difficult for me. So this is one thing I want to share with you all. <laughs> um, on a different note, do you ever believe that the Dalai Lama will return to Tibet? <laughs> I not only hope, but I also believe that His Holiness Dalai Lama will one day go to uh, Tibet. But if you really look at the Chinese and the um, power and how difficult they, they are, I, I, I have doubts. Um, what makes you doubt that, um, like when you went to Tibet, what did you see that causes those doubts? And the Pernangola, 
the Chinese were very uh, uh, skillful <coughs> and very playful also and they are not easily going to give up what they are looking for. Just uh, in order to give you an example of it, when I went back to Tibet, I saw that um, there were lots of Chinese uh, um, people put, who put up their tents in small shifts. And uh, I saw that in the morning they just take away the tent and it is all full of uh, goods for sale. They're trying to sell everything. And then I went to my village and came back to that town and there were no Chinese at all. And I asked my friends what happened to the Chinese who were trying to sell things here. And then they were saying that uh, the Chinese have uh, shifted to the next town. So they, they are not easily going to give up. Um, finally, my last question is, what are your hopes for the future of Tibet? ngarangle <laughs> With regard to Tibet, I don't really have much hope. I really feel sad to talk about Tibet. Um, especially now uh, that uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama says that uh, uh, Tibetans have to take care of themselves. We are, uh, in terms of population, it's very low. And when I was in Tibet, um, uh, went back to Tibet, I met few of the women um, there and, and I asked them where they are going. They were heading somewhere and they, were tell they told me that they are going to sterilize them. Um, for infertility, I mean, st really st st abortion or sterilized. And I was, I really lost a big hope at that time because at the back of my mind, I hear the um, things that His Holiness was saying. And here I see these Tibetans who are really um, going to abort and steril st sterilize, sterilize themselves. And uh, looking in terms of population, it is very low and I really don't see much hope. And as for myself, as I told you, I don't have education or any other thing. So from my, uh, uh, no matter how much determined I am, I can't do much. And uh, I, my hope is very low. Is there anything else you would like to add that you would like us to know about Tibet or yourself? If you have any questions or else, I don't have. Thank you so much again. It was a pleasure. <laughs>